welcome back. This week, I'm heading back into Death Valley to see if I can't finish up the Pacific Crest Overland Route that I totaled this exact truck on last year. From, from this morning, I had this completely unexpected, it looks like I'm heading directly towards Hurricane Hillary. We're gonna take a back way in to Saline Valley so we don't have to go over that entire previous section and uh, you know we're gonna actually map some new trails. I'm pretty excited about that. Saline Valley Road, no services available. High clearance vehicles advised, etc. etc. Yep. Sounds about right. A few minutes later. So far there's a huge difference in which way I took initially to exfil from where I wrecked last year. Like it's partially paved, it's a little bit rutted out, but this is, this is smooth sailing for now. Alright, well we made it to the turn for Jackass Canyon, so we're going to just start heading out this and see if we can make it all the way through. If, with any luck, it'll take us to Saline Valley Road, which should basically have us at camp within about an hour. As I had ample time to reflect back, a well of emotions started coming over me as I was getting closer to the crash site. But from what I can tell, this might be the section where I was like, rocks, 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 jammed on the brake, hit the washout. But this, this landscape has changed so dramatically. It's, if I didn't have this mapped, I probably wouldn't be able to, it, it just doesn't look anywhere near the same. Well, it's been a really, really long road back here. But as you can see, I'm in the same exact spot of which I was last year after I totaled the truck. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to finish up the rest of section four today and then another 100 starting on the north side of section five. But unseasonably and uncharacteristically like being in the middle of the desert, it's starting to downpour. And that's because Hurricane Hillary is knocking at our door just south of us. And there are a few dangers out here that all have to constantly be aware of. And they are flash floods, washouts, and landslides. And they don't get much warning, if any at all. What have I done differently this time? prevent catastrophic things happening like last time. So from a mapping perspective, Guide GPS has a really unique feature in which you can download up to 100,000 squares. I downloaded like 94,000 squares, which basically covers California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah. I downloaded all that in super high resolution with a topo map and then a off-road map. And so not only can I map offline, I can zoom in really far and see a lot of clear detail that I couldn't see prior. Also, we're traveling lighter. As you can see, I have the bedsides on and the back loaded up for maximum vibe, which reminds me of the Aussie style I originally built this weapon to emulate. As I was facing extreme conditions, my essay was through the roof. Parts of the road were washed away and every raindrop deteriorating traction. I can see that the rocks have been moving and uh, it's raining, so it just makes the soil in this area a little more unstable. It just doesn't seem very safe.
steady rain has persisted for hours. Conditions worsen by the minute. Here's just a little perspective. Soon enough, I crested Lippincott Pass, only to see something few get to witness firsthand, a flooded racetrack playa. Now we're heading down into racetrack playa, and uh, it looks like it has a sheet of water on top, so I wonder if it actually does. It kind of looks really sweet. I'll take some pictures. Coincidentally, when the ground becomes saturated and a strong wind is blowing, it will glide the stones across the surface, creating what looks like tire tracks. This, plus the dry lake bed being nearly perfectly oval and flat, is how Racetrack got its name. As I arrived at Tea Kettle Junction, the rain had intensified signaling it was time to kick this adventure into turbo mode, especially with the challenging dry lake bed crossing just a few miles ahead. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna try to get across the uh, Hidden Valley dry lake bed, which uh, isn't so dry anymore. Peering across the drenched scenery, uncertainty started to creep into my mind. Would I navigate this seemingly endless wet expanse? Well, despite those challenges, I felt compelled to venture forth and test my limits. Right, yeah! Against all odds, I had conquered the soggy terrain. From nearly getting bogged down, I emerged victorious on the other side. But there was no time to rest as Hurricane Hillary was just settling in. There's not much for traction in this section. <laughs> I am a bloody mess now. I've been driving half sideways through here because I just can't get grip. And then the ruts keep pulling me into them. What once were tire tracks had morphed into deep ruts, and ruts oh, evolved into washouts, nearly rendering the path impassable. Navigating this uphill through the thick mud, every turn of the wheel felt like a battle won against the relentless forces of Hurricane Hillary.
Just when I thought I had escaped the challenges of Saline Valley Road, I reached California 190, only to discover that it too was succumbing to heavy impacts and was on the verge of closure. A little local intel from the CHP officer who shut down the road is that uh, there's a water crossing up here right past Town Pass. There's like water covering the road and he said it's flowing at like two feet deep. And he was like, ah, you just go ahead and go through. Looks like you're prepared to do it. And uh, I didn't even have to ask the guy, so I'm pretty stoked, pumped right now. This road damage is captured from the southern end of Badwater Road, showing debris nearly bearing a speed limit sign. And this road damage on CA-190 is just east of Furnace Creek. Well, I guess that was the old flooded roadway for the next 11 miles. <laughs> And basically that's what I'm dealing with out here in the desert. It's gotten its whole year rainfall in like a day. So realistically, everything's flooded like crazy. Um, yeah, but that was it. That's the, that's a cool water crossing. That's the best one I've seen yet. So I was like, oh, let's get that on film. Anyway. As I was driving through Furnace Creek, park rangers were stationed at every side road, which signaled an impossible venture southward into the Badwater Basin. I suppose no time is better than now for that backup plan. As you can see, the original route goes directly south from Furnace Creek through the Badwater Basin. However, I was left with only one option, and that was to bypass Badwater Basin and try to reconnect to the trail further south from California 127. At the junction of California 127 and Salt Creek, I aim to reconnect with the Pacific Crest Overland Route. However, the road ahead had appeared almost impassable, presenting a daunting and dangerous obstacle to my journey. Warning, do not attempt this without the proper training equipment and a little bit of that shit crazy. Being swept off the road or trapped in the water could result in fatal consequences. After a scouting trip down Saratoga Spring Road, I reluctantly accepted that reconnecting to the PCOR wasn't feasible. I resigned to wait till morning to reassess my options, knowing a new day might bring clarity to my path forward. As Mother Nature wields its mighty sword, you can see the amount of destruction I'm dealing with today tried to complete Section 5 of the Pacific Crest Overland Route. Yesterday we saw that Death Valley was completely oversaturated and flooding and washouts. I'm getting reports that the same things are in Mojave, in Joshua Tree, and further south. So right now it doesn't make any sense for me to try to complete Section 5 of the Pacific Crest Overland Route. I'm Austin with Wolfpack Outdoors. I'll see you on the trail. Yeah.
The four-wheel drive adventure life is proudly supported by Norworld Australia, Alamosa, and Tana. Midnight Forest, Shady Overlander. Four-wheel campers and viewers like you, thank you for your continued support.